By the way, welcome to Rock the State Media's book release party. I'm Rick Von Trigger, more commonly known as Trigger. Uh, tonight, we are celebrating the official release of your book, Blueprint Scorecard. It's eight mindsets that soar or sink a book for your business. And the book is written by the co-founder of 90 Minute Books, Stuart Bell. We're going to get to that in just a few minutes, but I do want to set this up a little bit. Have you ever wondered why some people uh, effortlessly create a book that builds their business while others struggle to get anything even started? Over the last 10 years, Stuart Bell has helped hundreds of business owners, entrepreneurs to create a conversation starter book. It identifies off all the leads that you need and to get them converted from conversation to clients to revenue. It's a book packed with examples, tips, videos that support each and every chapter. And the blueprint, the book blueprint scorecard identifies the eight building blocks to a book that builds your business fast. It doesn't waste any time. It's not a very long read, but you will, you will get tons out of this. And as we get this going here tonight, I want to bring in someone that knows um, our author, our speaker tonight. The, the rock star. Uh, tonight, we're going to have David Spray come in, first of all. He's a serial entrepreneur, founder of the IC Disc Alliance. Uh, Dave has firsthand experience of the power of the conversation, the starting book idea. Known as the IC Disc Guy, his book is an IC Disc right for me. He's established himself as an authority in the space, opening up doors and engaging clients that are otherwise hard to reach. I'm going to bring him in to center stage here, pin you to the front for everyone to see. Good evening. Welcome tonight. Uh, how are you doing this evening? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you, Trigger. So, you know, Stuart, what do you have to say about this guy? What do you have to say about 90 Minute Books and this new amazing book that's just coming out? So, Stuart makes having a book nearly effortless. Uh, that's one thing that comes to mind. And the other is when you talk to him, it's a great chance to kind of fine tune your hearing uh, because his accent can sometimes be a little challenging. So you have to work really hard. You can't be kind of half paying attention. So that's another great thing about Stuart. It, it's good practice for paying attention. What would you say would be the biggest thing you get out of these type of books, these, these small business guided books? What's, what's the biggest advantage of having one of these? Well, it's the item one off the scorecard, which is, I believe, selecting a single target market. And it's, so what I do when I'm on a general public, you know, uh, event like this, people's eyes just gloss over on this whole IC disc thing. It's super niche. Tax stuff, you know, 99 plus percent of the companies can't even benefit, no individuals do. So it's just extraordinarily niche and it has no interest to like 99.999% .99 of the population. But here's the, the wonderful thing about the book. But when I do find somebody who is a fit for this, and they're maybe considering talking to a few different providers. And I walk in and I come with my book. It's got IC Disc right in the name. And I mentioned that I've created the IC Disc Alliance. And then I have a podcast on IC Disc. It really is just an enormous differentiator because our competitors are generalist CPA firms, other tax firms. None of them have IC Disc in the name. And so, you know, they're like, hey, it's Smith and in Jones, we're an accounting firm. We do a hundred things. We will take wonderful care of you and your IC disc needs. It just really is a tremendous differentiator to stay focused on that one target market. So can I say that I've gotten a client specifically from it? Has anybody called me up and said, hey, I found your book on Amazon. It's awesome. Sign me up. No, but where it works, though, is that differentiation and that credibility that when I, I can tell people I'm the IC disc guy because I'm the only guy with a book on the subject. I'm the only guy with a podcast. I'm the only guy that has a company with that in the name. And so it's a differentiator 
that is incredibly powerful. This is what the book launch is all about. What would be your wish for Stuart and his new book? Any special wish for him as we launch this tonight? I wish that, uh, that the book adds as much success to his business as the book has for mine. Congratulations. Thanks again, David, for being with us here tonight. Sit back and enjoy the rest of us with this. And I do know we do have one other testimony. We're going to slide in here right away. You get bonus because we want to hear about the expert and what he does with people. And I know we did just get in. I believe Jim Hacking is here with us. Jim, are you with us tonight? I am here. Welcome, Jim. Thank you for do doing this. By the way, Jim Hi, is the owner of Hacking Immigration Law. Jim has built a reputation of fighting for immigrants every day. His passion for helping has led him to build a YouTube channel with hundreds of immigration videos, a regular live Q&A, which is a call-in show and on YouTube and Facebook. And of course, he's authored several conversation starting books like we're talking about tonight. He helps identify the clients that he can best serve. Thanks for being with us tonight, Jim. I know you know Stuart. So uh, I'm really excited about Stuart's book. I'm, I'm about halfway through it. And I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed working with Stuart and his team. Um, it's been super easy to create two books. And I can just give a testimonial, not only as a author who's used the service, but just the other day, um, I'm, I am in a coaching group with a guy named James Shramko. And he and he, there's a guy in that group named Lloyd. And Lloyd just did a book and I, I got really excited about the book and I got on, um, I got on, kin I got on the Kindle and ordered it for my Kindle. And it wasn't until after I read the book that I realized that it was a 90 minute book that he had done with Stuart. And it just goes to show that when people see something that they want, they go and get it. And it's 90% of the title. I actually read the whole book. I think most people don't read the books that they download on the Kindle. So it just was, it was so funny to be on the user experience through no marketing, no tricks, no Dean Jackson's magic wand, no Stuart Bell. I just like a true consumer got on the Kindle, ordered the book and was super excited. So I can tell you from a user standpoint and from an author standpoint that, that the point that Dean makes about what's the hook, what's the single target market. These are the things that you need to be thinking about. You don't, you don't need to be spending. I know a guy, there's a lawyer friend of mine who has twice spent $50,000 to self-publish a book because it makes him feel better, right? It makes him, once they get the download and once you get the email address, that's what this is about. This is true direct response marketing the Amazon stuff, the author sales, forget all that stuff. This is about getting people to raise their hand and to let you know what it is that they're interested in so that you can then communicate to them about that topic. Perfect. Well said, Jim. Thanks for joining us tonight. And we really appreciate you being here in the gallery. It's time now, though, to bring in the main star of the night and uh, let him uh, get involved with us. By the way, we already have people asking, where can I get the book? Where can I get the book? So, Stuart, they're already excited about having the book. But before I bring Stuart in, I want to let you know a little bit about this amazing man. After a long career in IT, financial services companies, and regulatories like Goldman Sachs, uh, the Financial Service Authority back in the UK, Stuart took his uh, project and operational expertise to launch Monument Marketing back in two, 2011, helping companies with their marketing operations. 2013, he started working with Dean Jackson, who we'll hear from later on tonight. He's here. Uh, and then in 2015, Stuart and Dean co-founded what is now known as 90 Minute Books, a business dedicated to helping business owners and entrepreneurs create conversation starting books that identify and engage future clients like we just heard. Stuart's moved to the United States in 2018, where he continues to work with 90 Minute Books and with Dean Jackson Companies and consults with a handful of private clients and financial services firms to super yacht businesses. That's a mouthful. He does a lot. Here he is. He's got a book. It's done. It's ready to go. Everyone get a virtual round of applause and a welcome to Stuart. Great to see you tonight, Stuart. 
I just made the classic mistake of forgetting to unmute my mic. Hey, <laughs> good to be here. <laughs> it was to uh, build up the anticipation for the accent. That's what I was doing. So what does it mean, first of all, to hear from two colleagues, friends, to hear them speak about you, your genius, and what you've done? What does it mean to you, first of all, to hear from them? It's unbelievably uncomfortable. I think anyone who knows me knows I'm typically in the background rather than the foreground, although on calls or in small groups, I'm certainly not short of sharing some marking of which I was on a call earlier today and promised the, the guy I was talking to with the recording afterwards, because the more enthusiastic I get, the faster I speak. And that would be difficult if I had a pure American accent, but throw in some British and a, a little bit of a Northern accent every now and then. It's really, as Dave said, forces attention or uh, there'll be questions and answers later. I'll be doing the questions. <laughs> I think I think the accent works for you. It, it, it's, it's part of the charm. It's part of the attraction. And your book is very easy to have that same attraction with it. I've enjoyed reading it. By the way, for those that do not know, this book is... Uh, just a hundred plus, it's 118 pages. It, it's, it's really not a big read, but it is packed. And we're going to unpack a little bit of it here tonight. And we will give you links to purchase, to order, and be a part of this amazing. Plus, we're going to give away some prizes tonight. So first of all, how do you think of a book as a marketing tool? We've already heard that a little bit. But the first thing is, your book is a marketing tool, not just a book to be read, right? Yeah, exactly. I'd say a lot that use the term a lot that the book isn't the product the conversation is the product so it really helps people change that mindset from putting too much time and attention unnecessary time and attention because it's definitely a case of diminishing returns even in the world of of non-fiction um, so even in the world of fiction where the product is literally the book itself read rates are astronomically low in the world of conversation starting books where people are requesting a copy of it because they want the answer that the book provides not necessarily to be entertained by the content that's even more important it's like the old joke of the guy who comes into the factory and the factory machines are broken down and hits it with a hammer and charges them a hundred thousand dollars it's the one dollar to hit the machine with the hammer and 999,000 to know where to hit it. It's the same with the book. The people are requesting these books from us as business owners and entrepreneurs in order to solve a problem, not to be entertained. So although hopefully there are entertaining bits in there and it's, and it's not a, a slog, really what people are doing is buying a solution. And if they could just hit a button and have the problem fixed, the majority of people would go for that option. And that's really the conversation starting point. That's the product of what we're doing. It's leading people towards that next step and really helping them resolve their problems. And your, your particular book outlines the process of creating a book that does what you just talked about. You, you, yeah. you literally are given the blueprint to get a book created, written out of their head and be a lead magnet to get more clients, more business. So how did you research for this? How did you work through a book like this to help more people well the first step is start a company nine years ago that helps people do it and then once you've done a thousand of them you kind of got that framework in mind so if you want to shortcut it then you can just get a copy of the book and and uh, and follow this the path but i mean joking aside this framework that we have because it's a relatively novel and unique approach and dean who's on the call is the my partner in the business started this idea of money making ebooks way back in the early 2000s so as a as an idea to identify leads this is nothing new we've been doing this for a long time but the the marrying up with the technological advances advances in self-publishing and just the multiple platforms and the ease of doing it now really means that rather than just having a digital product that people think of as an ebook that is a lead generating piece on a website now you've got the opportunity to create an actual book that yes you can have a digital version of it as well but an actual book which carries all of that authority with it that's the good thing you can piggyback off this authority the bad thing is that everyone forgets that it's it's a, it's a trick it's a tool and they get sucked into the same problem so everyone thinks about it in a traditional sense and then thinks that they need to write for hours and hours and edit for hours and hours. It needs to be so many pages. I know that Betsy Vaughan's on the call as well. She deals with a lot of our 
of our people coming in in the first instance. And if I had to pay her a dollar for every time that she got asked the question, well, how many pages should it be? Uh, we might be bankrupt. But that as a, the main problem, the main purpose for writing the book is the traditional publishing world being able to bridge into that in a kind of guerrilla sense and create something that has that authority, that benefit, but not get sucked into the mechanisms and the slow process around it or the requirements around it. That's really what the book does. It helps you create something that is to the purpose, engages people, starts the conversation, but then allows you to move on and think about what happens beyond the book. So you don't get too stuck in this idea of the book as a product, the conversation is the product. So I don't want to ruin all the goodies in the book because it, it, <laughs> it, 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 it is a very helpful tool. It literally is a checklist. There, there are pages in here that you check off and you'll be able to write in. So the part workbook, scorecard, it's a little bit of everything. But you also embed QR codes in this to lead them to video content to support the writing of the book. Explain that. because That's a great teaching tool. And it really does flesh out some of the meat of what you're trying to explain here. It's because I'm a terrible writer. I mean, <laughs> so if I can avoid putting words on the page and instead record something, because you ask me a short question and I give you a five minute answer. So the chapters are uh, 10 pages or so, and then I go on for another 20 minutes in a video. But the benefit that it had, and actually let me caveat it by saying no one who's ever listening to this should do the same thing because it's an absolutely idiotic idea that takes far too long and gives you far too much of a headache to do. So do what I say, don't do what I do. But for those of people who really want to do it, the benefit is it's just another channel. So the the reason many people don't write a book is because of this headache and overhead of actually doing the work. It's mm -hmm. difficult. It's a pain. Not only is it hard to get the words down, but it's also a, a slog if you're trying to edit it yourself because it's a never ending process. So the benefit of the video is it can provide additional resources, but also in a different, uh, a different channel, a different medium. So me writing each chapter and giving some pointers and some guidance, but then recording it so to be able to elaborate and talk about it in a slightly different way the same message is just going to hit home in a, in a different manner because some people will resonate with one thing. Um, for those who really struggle with the accent, they can just read along in the book. <laughs> it's like uh, analog subtitles. <laughs> well, I think it's a, a very ingenious way of doing a book. And I, I, I love the fact that you put them in there because it does turn it into more of an experience, not just another read. Yeah. Because you scan it in and you do watch, you do listen. I also, I, I do want to pull out of the book here a minute that you break down things very clearly, very simply, like you talk about titles, you talk about subtitles. And even in the book, I think you challenge the idea that subtitles are a waste of time. You actually make subtitles almost more important than the main title. Can you explain that? Yeah, I came from, so the titles and subtitle mindsets are, um, a, a title that resonates and it stops people in their track. It does what it says on the, on the tin. And this is something that Dean and I have talked about for years and Dean talked about independently years before I was around. We've worked together for 10 years. So it's like being married. I always think that we've been together forever. <laughs> um, so the idea of a title that resonates. So maybe five or six years ago now, there was this, it must have been out there in the in the environment that everyone had to have a clever book title, like a one word clever title that really meant nothing to anyone. So the, to sow the seed with people that it really should be a title that resonates, it stops people in their track. And then the subheading is an opportunity to amplify that. So rather than we get sometimes before they speak to us, people sometimes want to put a subtitle in that talks about them. It maybe it's talks about the the whatever the subject of the book and the subheading would be written by such and such an expert. Or some people want to stuff in a whole load of keywords, other words. So it'll be the the book about saving your relationship, but also how to handle your kids and how to be better in work. They're like stuffing in all of these other things. So our idea, our framework is that the subtitle should amplify the content, amplify the title, and think of it like the description in an AdWords ad. So an AdWords ad, you've got the headline, which is the short, bold text, and then you've got the more explanatory text beneath it, but it's amplifying. It's not introducing new ideas. 
that's really kind of tie down this single job of work of the book. We're not trying to be everything to everyone. We're trying to write something that is fit for a certain campaign, a certain objective, a certain target audience. And you kind of did the same thing when you went into the cover and the back cover. You kind of went into the same. There's a different philosophy that you're espousing here is because most people do. They, they, they grab the book. They look at the front cover. I'm one of those people that I go into the inside cover and read some of the profile information that's often there. But you talk about being minimal visible commitment. And that visibility on the backside is really important. Explain the power of the backside, please. Yeah. So my British sense of humor just makes me laugh at the way that you worded that. I'd like the opportunity to explain the backside. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> this is what you get when you work with us. <laughs> a great book and a little bit of innuendo. <laughs> um, so the back, the idea of this minimum viable call to action. So a minimum viable everything, minimum viable commitment, minimum viable call to action a minimum viable product as a name that's got some traction. Now people know what that means. As far as the book goes, we're thinking about it in terms of the job of work of this book. So the job of work is a conversation starter. It's a way of putting an ad out there and have people that resonate with it, raise their hands and say, yes, I want that. Yes, I'm interested. The job of work of the book is then to guide them towards the next step. And as we have worked with hundreds of almost a thousand people now, it's always a struggle of what next, because what 99% of people's experience is they've got a book. The back is in a traditional sense, a description of what the book's about, because the back in a traditional book is when you're browsing a bookshelf and you pick it up, it's to sell the book. That's not what it is here. Here it's to guide people towards the next step. So the framework that we talk about in the book itself is one that's we very specifically developed that works for most people. It's a three-step process. The first one is just give people somewhere where they can go and consume more. It's no commitment. They've interested enough to do something, but not interested enough to reach out. So just give them a place to consume more stuff. So if you've got, if you're gym hacking and you've got hours worth of videos, then head over there. If you're Dean and got hours worth of podcasts, head over there. If you're Dave and you've got hours worth of, again, podcasts and, and detailed tax stuff, head over to the Alliance website. So the first one is for, we call them tire kickers, but it's just for those people who aren't ready yet. The second step is then serves a twofold purpose. The first one is to identify hotter prospects. So let's assume that the majority of people have opted in to get a, a copy of it. By giving people a step two, something that they can download, a checklist or a scorecard or white paper, that's identifying of all of your lists, the hotter prospects are the ones who request that step. The second purpose of that second step is if people get a physical copy of it. So we talk about all ways of getting in front of audiences in a physical sense where you might not have opportunity to collect their email details. So that second step, because people are opting into it, it gives you the opportunity to now collect email addresses that you wouldn't otherwise get. If people download this from Amazon, get a physical copy, I don't know who that is unless they choose to take the second step and then do the scorecard and opt in. And then the third step is to take an action to, um, to, to do something with you. So to come in for a meeting or a review, whatever that first step in the actual process is. So our back cover now is serving three purposes. It's given people who are just in a consumption space the opportunity to consume more. It gives us a chance to collect, collect details of people who we otherwise haven't got or identify the hotter prospects. And the third one, it's a very easy way for people to get started and actually take that next step to doing something. And again, that's a lot different of approach than most people who just, you see a picture of a face, you have some contact <laughs> information maybe, or it's more the accolades and that's it. But you actually yeah, exactly. have a reason for that back cover. Because the job of work, let me just grab another book off the shelf here. The job of work of a normal book, and not to pick on Pat, I just happen to have it on my desk here. The job of work is to sell the book because it's thought of in a bookshelf or it's on an Amazon storefront. This isn't the job of work. This is to get people in conversation with you. And that's the, that's the next step. A lot of people are talking about books now being the new business card. It is one of those tools that unlocks the conversation. I want to go to the chapter... Uh, six here, I believe it is page 41 of your book. You're talking about amplifying with uh, no, hang on. let me get the right one. 
Yeah, chapter six. It's the value-driven content. It's about treating your client like a five-star prospect. Let me read this from the book because I found this to be also counterintuitive to a lot of people who write books and what their philosophy is. You put it in here, treat everyone as if they are a five-star prospect. Your best clients will be those who read what you offer and are happy and excited about learning more. It's a fish hook. You want to get them all excited and have them keep coming back for more, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And take that next step. So whether the more is a conversation or the more is consuming more information, just knowing, reassuring them they're in the right place. So again, going back to this idea of the book isn't the product, the conversation is the product. We want to accelerate that conversation in these minimum viable commitment steps, these small steps that move people towards an outcome. And the outcome is that we're doing business together. So a lot of these ideas are coming from the fundamentals that Dean's taught for years. Obviously, it's kind of interlaced through everything that we do. The framework that I've built around the work that we do with people is built off the eight uh, the Breakthrough DNA book that we've had, the Eight Profit Activators, which okay. is a framework that breaks down your business into kind of like a before, during and after unit. So all of the book work that we're doing is sits in this before unit. So a great other example for people as they're listening would be to go to emailmastery.com and download a copy of that book, because that book is built in the exact same framework of offering something of value. It introduces people to the idea of a nine word email, which is a, a framework that we have, and then starts to educate them, hey, this is one of many frameworks that work great for building and developing and and monetizing eventually your email list. So all of these ideas are really amplifying this before unit in order to kind of move this conversation forward. And delivering value in the content is how you do it. Make this the most valuable thing that people can pick up. Yes, there's a whole world to the side here, but make this the most valuable thing. And then they'll be excited to do more because, hey, if this guy's giving away all of this stuff for free or for four dollars on amazon then just think about what else they've got that uh people might be willing to pay for coming up in a few moments you're going to be able to ask your questions of Stuart to pick his brain a little bit more celebrate his book launch here with us so get ready we'll bring you on and again cameras microphones on we'd love to have you participate or if you're too busy uh drop in the chat and we'll bring that on as well there is, uh, we do have people celebrating that they have worked with you. It's been successful. So it's great, Stuart. What was the hardest part for you with this book? What was the hard, I mean, you know books, you know how to create books, you know how to coach people on doing it. But what was the hardest part for you to get your book done? <laughs> well, anyone, we don't do as much as we should do on social media. And I certainly don't. I'm very much in the background and um, it, it's never a thought to, to put stuff out there. But if you search back in things that I've put out there in the past, I'm pretty sure that you'll see an early version of this two years ago, three years ago, maybe. Um, so talk Dean's, about is that. Dean's like, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> right. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's a little bit of... Uh, like I say, don't do what I do. The whole kind of when I was, as you go through the videos here, once I did them in order, and once you get towards the ones at the back, you can already hear my voice going a bit croaky after 30 minutes talking now. The ones at the back, I mean, good luck if you can kind of get through the raspy voice. So just the mechanics of getting it, of overcomplicating it. I mean, despite the fact that we tell everyone day in, day out not to overcomplicate it and just get it out there really a case of like i say cobbler's kids have no shoes type thing and <laughs> our my book's been sat on the shelf virtually done for years Stuart, people are still beaming in your party is still going we got about another half hour here to go tonight by the way when you do get the book the front page right away there is a qr code scan that and you literally will get your own scorecard so as you learn and go through it you literally can start checking off the process uh in full disclosure I'm a client of theirs now, uh, and I'm doing this very same thing. So I'm not just loving the book myself. I'm doing the book myself. <laughs> so and that's, that's ingenious a, that you put them right to action right away. Well, and that's a great point. So this is now fundamental to our onboarding process. So for clients who work with us, a scorecard is the first thing that we ask them to complete because it gives such a, it, it sets the framework for the rest of the process. 
and gets them thinking in the way that we want people to think. So when you're thinking about creating your book, the book that you create, if you can predispose people, so go back to Dave's example and Jim's example, both of those books set up how they work with clients and which clients are the best fit and what to expect on the journey in the book itself. So when people come and knock on the door and ask to become clients, they're already aligned with the approach that we're taking. So, I mean, we, uh, we have used this and, and still use this day to day in the business. I think it's fabulous. (laughs) And again, uh, it's, it's lightweight. If you, if you travel a lot, these are the type of books, these business type books are so easy to get and travel with. So I love what you're doing with these. And again, congratulations on the book. Now we are going to open this up to open Q and a right now. If you have a question, uh, the bottom of the zoom box has a little digital hand. You can hit that hand, raise it up, let it pop up and it will move you to the front of my viewfinder. And I'll be able to bring you in and briefly introduce yourself. And then you can ask your question of Stuart and, uh, let's let's see if we can get his voice to crack tonight. Let's let let's load him up so much that we yeah. can get that voice Coffee to crack. Coffee is keeping me lubricated. <laughs> Who has the first well, question of the night? Please, anyone that's got one, jump on in. And Stuart, do you have more? I was just going to say, whilst people are kind of summoning up their courage to raise their hands, I'll just talk about the size of it. So we talk a lot about the books should be consumable. I forget whether Dean used to say on a, trans, a cross-country flight or a flight north to south. So home here is up in Pennsylvania and the offices in Florida. So I used to fly regularly. The idea that you can pick this up at the beginning of a two, three hour flight and then really get the bones out of it by the time that you land That's the key thing that we want to do, because we don't want to give people a job to do, although there are worksheets and exercises that people can do if they want to do the DIY route. If they just want to have the confidence that we're the right people to work with, it's that two hour duration where you can easily consume all of this. Um, I drive back and forth now from Florida to Pennsylvania. So now I've got 22 hours. So I'm going to get a copy of War and Peace and I can read that on the next journey down. (laughs) Stuart was just talking about how you can use this and journal with it. Um, there actually are graphs and charts in there that you're going to rate yourself. So it's not just you always writing. Literally, there's a self-evaluation tool built in to literally help you. And I'm kind of implying here, but I'm thinking you'll probably read this multiple times because your questionnaires are, are, are you at this level? Are you at this level? Would you like to be at this level? So you do go back through this a second or third time, don't you? And you can watch your elevation, your writing skills grow, correct? Yeah, definitely. It's revisiting it because at the end of the day, there's eight mindsets that for the majority of people, you might not have thought about a book in this way. Because when you're in school and you're told to do a writing exercise, it's very kind of academic and formulaic and it's there's a way of doing it. When you think about books in a traditional sense, there's a way that everyone thinks about books. What we're talking about creating here is something slightly different, or if not slightly different in the end result, at least slightly different in the way that you think about it. So revisiting each of those eight mindsets as you develop through them is really the key to incrementally improving each of the mindsets. It's a, it's a heavy lift to get perfect scores across the board. So it's definitely something you can come back and revisit. So we have a question, Sean, welcome. I'm going to bring you into center stage. Great to have you with us here tonight. And Sean, what's your question for the rock star tonight, Stuart? Now don't put me in center stage. Nobody wants to look at this. I got a face made for radio. <laughs> you can't all be as handsome as you guys are. Uh, I've anyway, got an uh, accent I... for writing. So a face for radio and accent for writing. We're a perfect team. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, do you, uh, what was my question? My question was, if you have um, updates, so you do the book and then somewhere down the road, a month, six months, a year down the road, you decide you want to do a little update. Do you, do you have a process for updating that book or is it once it's done, it's done, you're moving on to the next book? Yeah, that's a perfect question. So what we try and do, so we say to everyone that we're not a publishing company, we're a marketing company who happens to think that books are the right thing. So we don't want to take any ownership of it. The things that we finish up and write for people will eventually give you a Word document back that you can make as many changes as you want. So perfect example, you might get six months down the track, get some feedback from people and think, oh man, I've missed out this whole section. People are asking me questions. It It would be beneficial to include it. The fantastic thing about print on demand now, so like 
Amazon's KDP or Lightning Source or some of the other providers, the only thing they need is a PDF. Mm -hmm. And you can create a PDF from Word. So this one of the pet peeves, like we see these competitors out there. So our, our products, the, the, if you come to work with us, we've got products that go from 25, uh, sorry, what am I saying? 20, 2000, I'm forgetting what our prices are. Uh, Betsy, hold your fingers up. Um, we've got $2,000, $3,000 and $5,000. So $3,000 is the sweet spot that is suitable for most people and what they want. It's a pet peeve where I see out there competitors in the tens, twenties, hundred thousand dollars. Now, not to say that they don't have different products, but for most of us as entrepreneurs, business owners, the thing that we want to create is the thing that you own. You can change and manipulate to whatever you want. And the end product is just a PDF that you can then upload to the system. Now, if you want us to do, I think all of our products have at least one, if not two, um, updates over the next 12 months built into it because we assume that people want to make an update so you can make an update send it back to us and then we'll reprocess it at all some of the um, technical steps are a bit of a pain in the neck so actually i say it's just a pdf but it's a pdf that needs to be formatted in the right way and pagination is a pain in the neck and if you've tried to do it it's like a website yes you can write a website yourself but if you try and get the alignment perfect you can spend like days trying to <laughs> dial it in so but no perfect question and Actually, that's the whole point. We really want people to make updates. We want people to do two things, actually. One is make updates as and when necessary, but two, not get too carried away with the first version and potentially think about a second version so or a second funnel. So let's say, what business are you in, Sean? Let's try and make it specific. Mortgage and financial specifically. Yeah, so mortgages. So there might be some first-time buyers and some refinance people, clients that you've got. From a book perspective, from a funnel perspective, those are two completely different groups. What The challenges for both of those groups are quite independent. Right. So you could have the one group targeting first-time buyers and another one talking about reverse mortgages or refinancing. Or That's the third thing business. that I do, reverse mortgages. <laughs> so there you go. So, so now you yeah, got a trilogy. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, and so we've got quite a few authors who have done that and they've got covers that look very similar. They're, they're stylistically, you can tell they're part of a family. Um, but take reverse mortgages. So over the last eight years, that market has changed quite substantially. The demand for it, people's perception, the actual products themselves. Mm -hmm. So three years ago, you might have written a first time buyer's book. But looking forward to the next three years, you might be thinking, well, first time buyers, uh, good luck. Right. Let's focus a bit on reverse mortgages. So there's, um, there's the, the, what we're trying to do is make it as democratized as possible for a reasonable cost to be able to create something that engages with a funnel type audience where you've got a follow on that you can clearly bring people through rather than spending a big amount of money on the, the the bible to mortgages that right. will take forever and uh, who cares well not to mention a book about mortgages is not going to be the most exciting book for most people to read <laughs> i can't see them racing out to buy the book unless you come up with the catchy title that shows your book about mortgages is not just about mortgages and getting a mortgage but it's multiple uses of it that allow them to do other things and that's my approach but you right. uh, you keep you said something Stuart. i'd like to kind of go a little bit deeper on if i can um yeah you said we're a marketing company who uses books to get the word out. And, and so I, I love that because I've already written a book and I used a different company because I didn't know about your company before. I did this uh, very early in COVID, March of 2020. I wrote my first book. And one of the things I got help with was writing the book. I wrote it. I followed somebody else's template, but I wrote it. And yours, it's kind of a speak to write, if I believe it's an interview and somebody else actually writes it. Uh, so it's an interview, but you write it. So okay. we take your words and then edit them to take out some of the conversational, um, the the most of the conversation, but it's still very much your words. And intentionally we did that. So we're very clear to say to people, this isn't ghostwriting because that's expensive and un unnecessary and it loses your tone. So what we're trying to do is keep it conversational. That's why we say they're conversation starting books to try and keep this whole framework around it. It's, it's a conversation. So, sorry, I'm going, <laughs> I'm giving a long answer to a no, you're, you're actually on track. Right. That was only one part of my question, but please go ahead. Right. It's very interesting. 
so what we're trying to do is keep this idea of the conversation going so the book that people read they can hear your voice in the words we're not trying to um to to sanitize it to the point that it's a academically well technically written manuscript we're trying to keep your voice and your approach because at the end of the day you you're not making money from a dollar here or there on a book sale you're making three percent 1.5 percent on a mortgage commission so when people walk through the door if they can relax and know hey i know sean i've listened to i've read his book i can tell his tone coming through i've maybe listened to some follow-up material in the email sequence after i opted in i'm now walking through the door we're talking the same language because we know the framework and it's almost like People have, we've got uh, 150, 160 podcasts out there. So I'll talk to people on the phone sometimes when they say, oh, I've listened to all of these shows and they'll quote back to me some things that I've said in the past, which is very unnerving. <laughs> Dean's talked before about being in the airport and uh, people have kind of stopped him and had that recognition, even though we're not kind of celebrity, celebrity, there's still something. But as a business owner, you want some of that. You want that feeling of connection with the people who of ultimately coming through the door because it does such a great job of of this relationship capital in the effort that you put into it and people can feel that and it just smooths the wheels towards the kind of commercial transaction as and when it eventually comes up well the really second the best. part of that question if i can stick it in there real quick i'm sorry rich i didn't mean to yeah. interrupt you what well, the really the meat of that question was again you're a marketing company that helps people get that book out for conversation starters the first book that I wrote, they weren't a marketing company. They were a book producing company. How is your system going, being the marketing side, how is your system going to help me get it out there? Because I got a book right now, but it's not getting any traction because it's not <laughs> being marketed because I don't know how to market. I'm learning that. But you guys say you're the marketer. How are you going to help me get that book out there marketed? First step, you need a book launch party. Stuart, take it away. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's it. There's an addendum going into the next version of the book that says uh, Appendix 1, do a book launch party. Um, No, but all joking aside, so there's two stages to this approach. Number one is we go into it with that end goal in mind. So everything that we're doing is leading to that outcome. So it's not about the books. It's not about book sales. We don't care if non, no books sell, really. It's it's about the conversation. So the whole thing is set up with that in mind. So the structure of the book itself leads people towards a more clear next step. So when you come on board and working with Christy on the onboarding stage, we start with the title and then we start with the back, uh, go, next go to the back cover. And then once we've got those two, what stops people in their tracks and what we want them to do after they've got it, then we fill in the gaps in between. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is, all of the products that we have come with a strategy call with me after the book's done people can have the call whenever but usually after the book's done so we talk a lot then about what the five initial things the five low-hanging fruit and then from that conversation it then usually pivots into okay specifically what do you think is your closest option to get to the market and we've got things that we talk about like using them in social media campaigns using them in facebook ads this concept of complementary non-competing businesses which are those businesses out there who have your clients but don't do your work so how you can use the book as a leverage and really there's so many options that the book is in the nicest possible sense, a Trojan horse for getting your message out there. So you're kind of leading with this container of a book, but bang, here's the message. You should work with us. And 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 again, it really is a new business card. It really is that new tool to, as we've heard from Stuart, it's a conversation piece. It's that thing that gets everything started and how you leverage it, how that promotion, there's so many different ways now. Uh, and that's where it's fun to hear the ideas they have, to, to hear how well they're doing. Speaking of that, we're going to bring in the uh, next guest here tonight because we have some prizes to give away. We also are going to share the links and how you can order this amazing book. But we are going to bring in now the partner in all of this. Um, and that would be Dean Jackson, co-founder of 90 Minute Books. Dean has been encouraging people to write, lead, getting books since 2003. The godfather of the conversational conversions. The book blueprint was born from the idea that a book is the best before unit tool to identify invisible products. Welcome to the stage. Dean, I know you're anxious to say to share a little bit about your friend, your partner. What yeah. would you say to Stuart right now? 
It's very exciting to sit here and listen without do, having to do all the talking. It's kind of nice to uh, see it all unfold here. So uh, fantastic. I just love everything that uh, Stuart's been able to really put together. He's the guy that gets everything uh, done here at 90 Minute Books. It's, uh, you know, to see the the vision of it. You know, I've been, he mentioned, you know, I've been sharing the idea of writing these books with people for a lot of years. And it wasn't until um, Stuart came along that we were able to really create the infrastructure to allow people to do that. And we've built an amazing team uh, with Betsy Vaughn and with Christy and uh, our design team to really, you know, I would say to people, we got a whole team of people standing by to help you get your book out into the world and without having to do any of the writing. You know, I always say people get, nobody gets talker's block. But, you know, it's like, that, that's one of the big things is that's one of the big procrastinations that people have. Um, I think as far as the blueprint goes, the most valuable thing, I love to see that um, you know, we put such an emphasis on the title because it truly is the driver of everything. I, you know, I would say the things that you need, you need, uh, you know, you got to have a book is the first thing. You got to have a title that upon reading it, your ideal prospect says, that's the book for me. And then you got to have a way for them to get it. And that, as soon as that happens, if you're connected in conversation with your ideal prospect, the book has done its job. The book has done its job. It doesn't matter when somebody asks for the book. It doesn't matter to them. They don't know or care whether the book is 50 pages or 250 pages. So minimum effective dose is get the title, get the book out there and start those conversations it's quick. Stuart, what do you have to say for Dean here since you guys work together all the time, but this is gonna have a special role that you're the star tonight. You're, 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 mm -hmm. you're the one, what would you say back to uh, Dean? Yeah, it's interesting to be on the other side of the fence. I'm usually kind of asking the questions rather than talking. But anyone, I was on a call with someone earlier on today and got, uh, they said hi, and then I stopped talking half an hour later about books because it's such a, I get so carried away. I was answering Sean's question before and then caught sight of the time and thinking, man, I could go for another 10 minutes diving into these ideas. It's mm -hmm. interesting to hear it back out loud as I'm saying it. The All of the, the framework that, I built in the scorecard is so fundamentally based on the approach that Dean's got. And the two, the reason that minute books is successful is because of that synergy of a framework that clearly helps people do it easily on top of the best strategy out there, which is creating something that is engaging and starts people talking in a conversation. So it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting to, be this way around rather than the other way around. <laughs> Dean, thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks, and, uh, thanks. We are going to drop in right now. Here's how we can locate the book. This is where you can go. The Amazon link. By the way, the Amazon cart may still be being automated, so be patient with us. But these are the correct links to use. You can also get the ebook version of this, the electronic book, whatever you call that. Um, and it. so, please use those. Uh, to get a hold of it, but we have prizes now to give away. So what we have is we have a spinning wheel that will be running here, and I'm going to share screen in a moment. But we have three prizes. The third place prize is going to be. Um, let me see here. We have a physical copy of the book and a twenty-five dollar gift card. That is prize number one. We're going to have that one come up first. Second prize will be a one-hour one-to-one book idea review and an autographed copy of the book. That we're talking about here tonight, your book blueprint. And the grand prize is going to be a $500 90-minute book gift card and an autographed copy. So you could use that to get some coaching expertise and maybe launch your own book. Uh, so we're going to bring this live on. And we have, I believe, and I apologize, we don't have everyone on here as the crowd was shuffling in tonight. Uh, but we do have the winner's wheel. So Stuart, uh, I'm going to give you the honors. Whatever your magic words are to have me spin this, you get to take over and MC the winning. 
Oh, that's, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing who wins this. Uh, there's some three great options. I've just seen so many of the names I recognize. I'm kind of distracted by the names spinning around. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, so I, so let's spin it and see which one. Are we doing the third one first? Yes, we we're going to do the third prize. Third prize will be the physical copy of the book and $25 Starbucks. And everyone get ready. I think... Uh, is she still with us tonight, everybody? Let's check and see. Claudine, uh, Claudine is, if you're with us, unmute a mic and jump on in here tonight. Otherwise, uh, we will make sure that she gets a copy of that book. We have the email and we'll do all the connections on that. So she cannot win again. That's gone. So now we're on to the one hour booking, <laughs> a book, a one hour and a one book idea review conversation. And you get an autographed copy here. Stuart, let's do it keep, again. Yeah, let's spin it and see. I probably should give a caveat on an hour's call. I can never keep it to an hour. So hopefully people don't <laughs> mind if it runs a little bit. So you might get a great bonus gift here, everybody. <laughs> and Roland. No, wait. It's over to Clark. Is Clark with us live here tonight? We are going to make the grand prize that you need to be present to win because, hey, that's part of the fun. I also get to make up the rules as we go along. Uh, so Clark, we will make sure we get Clark from that. And here we go. The grand prize is a $500 90-minute book gift card, an autographed copy, and you never know what happens after that, right, everybody? Because everyone wants to write a great, great book. Let's get someone from inside the Zoom box here tonight because we're going to spin until we get that grand prize winner here. And <laughs> Bill, is Bill with us tonight? Oh, it jumped. Oh, did, did oh William it jumps the next one? <laughs> <Bill for that. laughs> I did not double click but, it. It was not me. Uh, so let, let's might, try this. Let's try this William again. Might not be here. <laughs> let's see what we got. We had a lot of people register for this, and I was trying to get. Oh, Sean. Oh, Scott. Is Scott still with? I saw Sean earlier. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Scott, congratulations. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this out and let you come on center stage with here for a second here scott and uh congratulations you are the grand prize winner what do you have to think oh. about that you, you you come to a party and, and you get a great I, ride. I think that's amazing because the last time i won something was 1976 on the radio i called in i was the 13th guy and i won a record of a, a band i didn't even know so this is great <laughs> what have been your scott, thoughts is that Listen to argentina top you've got on Oh yeah! Hey, we won today. Hang on a second. Is it? Can we rerun? Rerun. <laughs> what would you have to say for Stuart after listening to all this, being a part of the party here tonight? What would you have to say that you've heard, learned, or gotten out of this? Well, you know, I'm excited about the uh, the after part, the launch. You know, Stuart has helped us uh, put together our first book. We're in the process of doing three more right now. And uh, I'm super excited about what you were saying, Stuart, about the launch. And I know we had a, we had our, our little consultation, but now I want to dig in deeper and really get a strategy for pushing these four books out and making it happen. And for everyone else, Scott's a great example of this funnel idea that we were talking about when we were answering Sean's question before of this target market and without giving the Scott's game away, but being able to dial it in even further after it, uh, the original version was kind of written, we were talking about dialing it in even more specific. Yeah, that's, yeah what I love right. about, that's what I love about this. It gives people ideas that they don't necessarily think about beforehand. So they come on thinking that I want to write a book and we write a book. But then as happened with Scott and his son who he works with, it just is an idea generator. And once the assets there, it just opens up this world of opportunities to really get it out in front of people and spread their message and start their conversations. It's um, yeah, it really is a, it's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's Congratulations fantastic. again for winning the grand prize here tonight. We will notify all the different winners and we'll get you guys connected with the proper prizes that everyone got. I just dropped in the social media connection. You can learn more about the, uh, the book blueprint.com go there. You can learn more about Stuart by going to his own personal social media. And of course, he has a blog that you can learn more about the publishing, the printing, the whole creative aspect, and learn more about what is going on there. We are coming down to the finish line in just a few minutes. And I'm wondering, with writing this book, 
what is your biggest hope that comes out of writing this book to help other people write great books? So what do you really want to happen next? I'm just hoping that it's more encouragement for people to get it over the line. Whether they do it with us or not is kind of immaterial, but obviously do it with us because it's the best choice. But that aside, I just hope the more people bridge this or break this idea that's holding them back. So Betsy, again, on the call, deals with a lot of the people in the first instance. And we have calls with people. I think we were talking today. There was a guy who reached out and Betsy was talking to him. He said, I first thought about doing this idea eight years ago. We have people on the list who we talk to. Betsy, when the next call comes up in the schedule, she'll look back to see when we spoke to them last five, six, seven years. And people have just been, oh, yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And we're entering 2023 in a not certain of economic circumstances. So that old adage of the best time to plant an oak tree was 200 years ago, the second best time is today. The same goes with the book. I really should have got this out three years ago. The next best time to have this book launch is today. So for everyone listening and thinking about doing it, it's straightforward and simple to do. Just get it out there and then worry, lay the track as you go. Worry about everything else afterwards. Stuart, congratulations. It's your book blueprint scorecard, The Eight Mindsets That Soar or Sink, a book for your business. Stuart Bell, the author, and again, 90 minute books. This is kind of their mini Bible, I would think, you know, now, now, now at this point to help guide people and direct people. But again, this is now your business card. This helps you. I'm a broadcaster, media coach, and we are using these as lead gens to keep our businesses going. Public speakers are using them as lead gens now. The, a small book to attract new clients is the best way to amplify you and your brand. So, Stuart, congratulations. You have a great tool to help other people. Do exactly that. Rich, Final comment, Stuart? I just want to say thanks for making this happen. It's something that we wouldn't have gotten around to ourselves. So so thank you. And just the testimonial for you, the process has been super easy to, to get to this stage. So I recommend that anyone who's looking to do book launch does it this way around. And then thanks for everyone who's uh, taken some time out of a Tuesday evening to, to connect through here. It really does make it, we've helped over a thousand We've helped create over 800 people create a thousand books. And it's the real conversations with real people about how they're using it and being on calls like this that really makes a difference. So yeah, just appreciate everyone being here. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thanks for everyone streaming along. We've been multiple streaming all night long. When we do these book launch parties at Rock the Stage Media, we stream it out to multiple channels. So it's not just this audience, there's a much larger audience. And again, watch for the replay with 90 Minute Books and Stuart Bell. Thanks for being here tonight, everybody. Peace safe and watch for your prizes to come your way.